My name is Ramon Gavori, and I am the president of the GTCIC, the Greater Tunapuna Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to be with us this evening. I'm just going to give some questions a minute or two to come on before we introduce our future speaker, Mr. Leslie Lifu. All right, so let me introduce Mr. Lifu. So good evening, everyone, again. We have with us, we have the pleasure of having Mr. Leslie Lifu with us this evening. And let me introduce Mr. Lifu for those who don't know. Mr. Leslie Lifu is not just a name. He's a legend in the world of business, recognized for his groundbreaking digital transformation strategies and mastery of technology. His expertise is unparalleled, etching his name in the records of business leadership, particularly on the Caribbean shores. With a career spanning over two decades, Leslie has fortified himself in diverse fields, including analytics, robotic process automation, and artificial intelligence. His experience is not limited to one sphere. Rather, he has applied his knowledge across enterprise-level corporations and government bodies, making a significant impact in both sectors. His vision is not mere regional progression, but the creation of a globally competitive region, leveraging data to bring about positive changes that impact every Caribbean life. Now, it goes a lot longer, but I will, I will not take the time to do the bio a lot a much more, because I know Leslie has a lot to talk to us about. Most and first and foremost, Leslie's an ex-CIC alumni and a very good friend of mine, so we're looking forward to some of that good old razzatazz and fearless and strong energy. So, ladies and gentlemen, I turn you over to Mr. Leslie Lifu. So good evening, everybody. Ramon, appreciate the invitation um, to come and speak with everybody. So firstly, yes, Ramon is right. I'm from Saints. Don't, don't hold it against us, uh, guys. But <laughs> this is, you know, super excited to be here with you guys. I see lots of familiar faces here. So, so um, and it's a growing room. I see people coming in um, into the Zoom. So super happy to have you guys here. Um, I see a couple of cameras on, guys. Um, and you guys know, switch on your cameras, like, uh, because visibility, guys, is profitability. So I'd love to be able to interact with you. And to get more to the session, go ahead and switch on. Um, now, before we jump in, I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the chat what companies you guys joining us from. Let me know in the chat where are you guys from. Let's see. All right, Mobile Medical, wonderful. Great to have you guys here. Axe Holdings, wonderful. Lucent Research, wonderful. Hey, Catherine. All right, cool. LSA Healthcare Services, beautiful. All right, good. So like, we have a nice diverse in terms of like lots of different groups. So, so the, the you know, Ramon and I were talking yesterday and we looked at the, we looked at the registration numbers and registration numbers were, were, were significant. Um, but I told them, I said, Ramon, like, Free events like this, typically the show operates are pretty low, um, and uh, and he guaranteed me that's not the case for the for his particular chamber, and he was correct, right? Now the the interesting thing, the best part about that stuff, guys, is that the people that show up, guys, because I know this is a high level room, the people that showed up here today, the best part of it is that you guys, you all here because you want to take your businesses to the next level, and um, and you guys already know this, but if a plant isn't growing, what is it doing? It's dying, and I'm. I'm not saying that you guys are dying physically, but part of you doesn't feel like fully alive unless, you know, unless you're reaching that next level. And as like all the businesses you guys call out here, I, I know that about you businesses already because Ramon read these things about me, but the reality is I'm a small business, I'm a small organization. 
but I've figured out some things. I've paid a lot of money also to figure these things out. Um, how, how you really succeed with AI. And today I just want to give you guys some of that stuff, stuff that I really only share with my top clients, but I recognize you guys are high level. So um, how many guys want some, want, like, want some strategies that, that cost me millions of dollars to figure out? Um, how many guys want those strategies just given to you? Let me know in the chat. Give me a one if that's you. Earth Caribbean distributors, wonderful. Welcome, guys. Give me a one if you guys. All right, love it, love it. Nice, guys. So the first thing I want to mention, guys, is that this is not going to be a typical webinar. It's not a lecture. It's not academic. Um, I really want it to be a conversation. So go ahead, use the chat. Let me know. And I see everybody. I see. I saw a couple of head nods. I see a lot of ones in the chat. So so communicate with me, guys, so I could give you more of the things that that you really want to learn about. So. Again, guys, this is going to be based on real world experiences and, and stuff that you could also take and immediately apply, regardless of the industry that you're in. So in hospitality, I saw healthcare, I saw consulting, I saw lots of other pockets here. But how do you make the most out of today's session? Because the thing is, the reality is, like even if, and I want you guys to take notes, um, Ram and I went to school together, and even the best schools out there, what did they do? They tell you, sit down and be, and be quiet. Right? And if I ask you guys, like, what did you study um, in Spanish in third form um, in first term? Like, none of you guys would remember. And that's because of how the school system um, trained us to be. But the reality is we learn in a very different way. Like, it's very active. So I want you guys to use the chat, communicate, um, keep moving, turn on your cameras, etc. Right, so ultimately guys if you want today to be a, a success for you if you want to get the most out of today the first thing i want you to do is commit so the first thing um, i ask you guys to do is pretend that this is a real session that we're having here today that we're locked in a room um so so for those folks here turn off your tiktok good thanks sam happy to see you committed to be here um turn off your tiktok turn off your facebook switch off your email for one hour um so that you could get the most out of the session next thing is participate use the chat write down stuff i'm going to be dropping some nuggets for you guys stuff that cost me a lot to figure out um, and i'm just going to give it to you and you can take it and apply it and the last thing is your relationship with i know now i'm going to be giving you some new stuff today um, but stuff that you may sound remotely familiar but sometimes it's it's not really in knowing these things but sometimes just having a reminder but also looking at how people are successfully deploying it so if you're not using ai to the full extent today in your business um, i want you guys to to, to stay tuned in so over the next hour, um, I'm going to ask you guys to do a couple of things. And in the spirit of participation, I want you guys to pull out your phone and I want you to give this a quick scan. Now, if you specifically, if you have a background in marketing, so anybody here with a background in marketing, love to know. Hey, Colin, welcome. Anybody here with a background in marketing? Give me a one if, if you have a background in marketing because you're going to especially enjoy this. All right, cool. Ramon has definitely. And guys, I've seen a lot of people DMing me, guys. Don't DM me. Like, share what you're doing with everybody so that everybody gets the benefit. All right, cool. Hey, Sean. Sean, go ahead and scan, scan this QR thing. It's going to ask you three questions. And I guarantee you guys, if you do this, this, this would save you six months of work easily. So go ahead and scan it, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so what you'll see when you scan it is pretty much this. So it's going to ask you your first name. So Sean, go ahead and put your first name in. In fact, let me do it with you. Sean, Sean, what's your email address? Let me know in the chat. Or you could, you could also hold down the, um, the space bar. Oh, sorry, guys. Here we go. I, wasn't, I didn't have my deck up. So this is what you, you should be seeing. Okay. All right, so Sean, what's your email address? And you can just DM it to me if you want to. Leslie, oh, could, you, could you show the, the image again this scan? I think some oh, person has it. Sorry, let me go one more time. Here we go. All right, so guys, okay. go ahead, pull out your phones and give this a quick scan. And if you're in marketing, this will save you six months of work, guys, easily but I don't want to give too much away. All right, cool. Let me know in the chat when you're done.
All right, beautiful. All right, good. Thanks, Ramon. Okay, wonderful. So guys, we'll come back to this in a little bit. Um, let me just move forward. So guys, since we've been spending a little time together, would it be okay if I, I shared with you a little bit about my journey, about you know the stuff that I went through to get here? Oh, Sean gave me his email address. So Sean, you know what I'll do? I'll put this in here. Sean, also drop in the chat. Um, what is your, um, give me a product name, a product idea. Oops, that's not it. Here we go. Sean, give me a product name, product idea that you want me to, to help you with. And it doesn't have to be a real product. I'll take this offline here, so. Oops. Let me see. Okay, let's see. Bush, nice. Send. All right, good. I'll pull this back here. And Sean, you're going to give me a product. Okay, carpool karaoke. I like it. So we're going to put our product idea inside here. Ooh, let me get rid of that. For some reason, it's not allowing me to copy. Carpool karaoke. K A R A O K E. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So then um, this is going to do its thing, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. So, guys, would it be okay if I shared a little bit about? Kind of how I got here, some of the things that I went through to save you guys. All right, beautiful. Thanks, guys. So after helping hundreds of companies and, and mentoring thousands of people to solve millions of the, no, th yeah, thanks, Sean, to solve millions of dollar, million dollar problems with data, I'd love to walk you through what I learned. Uh, stuff that I discovered across all industries, uh, companies are pretty much all size, even small companies, medium-sized companies, large companies. The unfortunate thing is mostly the large companies are benefiting or actually doing these things today. But as a small company, I'll share with you guys how I'm actually doing this stuff. So I'm not greedy, but most people, a lot of people know me as the data millionaire. And, and this here is my number. And when I get to this number, I'll retire. So, so when they think about me, when most people see me, this is kind of what they see. They see me with, uh, with ministers, with prime ministers, with CEOs, with captains of industry, and, and sometimes, sometimes celebrities. Any, any Beanie Man fans here? Anybody's a Beanie Man fan? Absolutely. Good. Um, this is this is probably, yeah, there you go. So this is probably one of the coolest things in my career. Uh, when I was invited to, to, to attend, to speak at a prime minister's summit, to motivate prime ministers into action. It was pretty crazy because, because it wasn't always like this. So there's these, these four letters that mean a lot to me. And um, while Ramon said he and I went together, went to St. Mary's together, uh, the reality is my results were not Ramon's results. I got COXX um, in A-levels. Um, this is actually my A-level results. I got, a, I got a C in GP, I got an O in chemistry, an X in biology, and an and a X in mathematics. So why am I sharing this massively embarrassing story with you guys? is because I didn't have anything that would, that would suggest that I have a successful career in AI, right? I didn't, I didn't start off. In fact, today I still can't code and I can't program. And, and how many of you guys here believe that you need to be a data scientist to use this AI stuff? And that's actually not the case. So by, by 2018, um, and I'll give you the short version of it, guys, but a lot had happened to us. And uh, we were a small company. We were first disrupted in 2010. And... I realized that I had to get out to, you know, expand my, 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 my base, and I started to expand out into other territories. And today we cover from Bermuda all the way down to Suriname. But, but in, 20, in 2010, I was just focused on very small businesses just in Trinidad and Tobago. By 2018, we had we'd started to use data, and we were really transforming not only our opportunities, but what our custom base could look like. And by 2018, we had a very well-established practice in data analytics. And we wanted to expand into AI. But in 2018, I still couldn't code. I still couldn't program. But I, I started to understand, like, how could we get into this space? So I, I went online, and I, I did what anyone needed to answer complicated questions does. I Googled it. And I came into this company. And in 2018, these guys, at the same time, like, a lot of press was 
you know, data science is the sexiest job in the world. How many guys, how many guys saw that? These guys were automating data scientists, right? It's crazy. So I called them up and I went up there and I ran into this guy. He happened to be a trainee as well. And it's, it's very rare that you find Caribbean people in the AI space. So we hung out and stuff and he really gave me a, you know, very intelligent guy. Um, he's actually from Shogunas. And um, he, he led me into, he told me what his journey was like. And he told me, Les, like, it, it's, it's, it could be on the surface, very complicated things, but stick in. So I took his advice and I went to the class, I went to a training class and it was five days. By, by a day and a half into the class, I was lost, completely lost. Because I even flunked math, right? I don't have a stats background, I can't code. And what I realized is that everybody in the class, they had a master's in statistics. And that was not me. But I continued, I took his advice and I continued on to the class. And on day five, um, they said, go to this online website called Kaggle. I don't know if you guys, ever anybody ever heard about Kaggle before? But Kaggle is basically this website where it attracts the best data scientists in the world. Um, so for example, Netflix will post data and they say, if there's a data scientist that gives me an amazing model, we'll give you a million dollars. So the best data scientists in the world go there. And on day five, they say, go download some data from Kaggle, put it into the, mod into the platform, hit this big start button, because they've automated data science, and take the results and put it back and see how you scored. And on that day, I became the 51st best data scientist in the world because I could click on a big start button. It was crazy. So that transformed like how I thought about AI, how I thought about um, business, because wouldn't you guys agree that businesses is really about process? So I came back home in 2018 and I expanded into AI and I was training data scientists across the whole Caribbean. I partnered with the Actors Association, I partnered with the TTIFC, and life was great. And then, and then this happened. And the whole world went into lockdown. And, you know, we were all now working remotely, and, and it wasn't terrible at first for me. Fortunately, this wasn't our first disruption. You know, we first got disrupted in 2010. And personally, I've been working remotely since 2015. But for many of the guys on the team, many of the girls on the team, it was a big adjustment, right? And at the time, this is what the team encountered. I mean, how many of you guys here saw a lot of mental health issues on your team? I, in fact, I know a lot of people who still haven't fully recovered from these mental, mental health challenges. So immediately as we went into lockdown, performance on the team, it just dropped off, right? Did that happen to you? Like, was, were you one of those people affected by, by the lockdown? So, so what had happened is at that point in time, when our performance dipped, we had three choices. The first choice is, and you guys let me know which, which one you, you did. Um, the first choice was, and as a small business owner, I know some of you guys probably thought about this as well, but my first thought was, should I get rid of everybody? Should I do a complete reset? Should I just start over fresh because performance was so bad? Just reset the team. My next option was, was this, is, you know, I could just beat people into submission. And I found myself like in online and Zoom calls and I was, I was raising my voice on calls. I was getting a little aggro. I was almost trying to force people to do work. Um, and, and maybe you're on the receiving end of that side. Like how many of you guys experienced those, those situations as well? And the last thing that we could do is that we could really try to find better ways for people to work. And that's, that's what we did. So given that we had a background in AI, we started to acquire and we started to develop AI that was good at one individual task. So we just had an AI that would just do one thing. And now the teams, the individual tasks, can now be AI augmented. So they were now producing the same results with a lot less effort. And performance on the team, it just it, it went back up the roof. Now, here's the crazy thing. When we started to do this AI thing with one task, we realized that people had tons of different tasks to do. So we went out and we, we literally, we spent millions of dollars. We didn't, we didn't intentionally go out and buy, spend millions of dollars. We just started to buy and acquire one more AI platform, one more AI system. And, and how many guys today have already started to use AI and realized that you have to buy more and more AI? So we started like four years ago, like hard on this stuff. And we start, when we look back now, we, we purchased over 200 different systems and we spent millions of dollars on AI. I sent my team on every single AI training out there. 
And it was it was crazy, like how much money we invested in AI. But the team was now able to be more strategic. How many guys ever heard the saying, anybody ever hear process will set you free? Because in the, in the, in the millions of dollars that we spent, anybody hear that? Give me a one if you heard that before. Give me a two if you never heard that before. Let me know in chat, guys. Have you ever heard process will set you free? Okay. Okay, a couple of you guys have heard it. Absolutely. Most of you guys have. So if you haven't heard that before, I want you guys to write this down. Because this is critical. And, and we spent millions of dollars doing training on AI and all sorts of stuff. And this is something that, that all of the courses seem to omit. Either, either one, they haven't figured it out just yet. Or two, they just don't want to share it. Right? And this is one of the things I want to give to you guys. Process will set you free. So what we did is we basically, we developed SOPs, we developed processes, we de developed workflows for everything in the organization. And, and what do you think happened next? Now that we had our individual AI that would just do one task and we had our processes mapped out, then all we did is we connected our AIs together and we inadvertently we developed a robot army. And today is my humble opinion that we're about seven years ahead of the market. And, and for every one person in my organization, we have 10 different AI systems. It is, it is very scary, guys. Think about like how many of you guys here have more, have more robots working at your organization than people. And that's, that's kind of where we are. But, you know, so we acquired, we developed over 200 AI systems. We spent millions of dollars on it. And that's how we're able to scale operations and still maintain service excellence. So, so you're probably asking, like, what does this have to do with you? And the answer is, is everything. Anybody here, anybody ever done any um, time management or productivity training? Anybody done that before? Give me a one if you've done time management or productivity training. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So you probably heard of a, a, um, a technique called time blocking. So time blocking is like everybody here um, are knowledge workers. So the typical knowledge worker has eight hours a day, right? For the eight hours a day, you, you break up your day into one hour blocks and you do one task per hour. Anybody, anybody familiar with that? Give me a one if you're familiar with that. Time blocking. Cool. So by the end of the day, you've done eight tasks. By the end of the year, the typical knowledge worker does 9,600 tasks. Easy math, right? We are now able to automate 10,000 tasks a day. That's the job of one person for an entire year. Ultimately, guys, we've added 365 people to our team without a dollar on payroll. If you guys are getting that, give me, give me, a, three, give me a 365 in the chat. If you guys are getting what, what, what I'm giving you guys. We added 365 people to our team without a dollar on payroll. All right? Ultimately, guys, our, our robot army, it 18 x our workforce. Like, what would I do if you did that in your own business? What would I do for your own organization? What would I do for your customers? What would I do for your employees, your stakeholders? So, so today, our company has continued to grow and we pivoted from where we were in 2010, which is really a handful of people serving just small businesses in Trinidad to ones that now operate in, in the bleeding edge technology for the entire Caribbean. And we serve a much bigger um, enterprise market with a much larger addressable market. And I, I mentioned this not to brag, but, but how, many, how many of you guys are here today having a conversation is like, how do we get into our next territory? How do we expand our markets? How many of you guys have that conversation in your business today? Give me a one if you want to expand out of Trinidad or even expand out to your existing customer base. Absolutely, right? And that's what we're able to achieve over time. And, and AI is driving all that stuff. Cool, good. So, so my, my three big takeaways, guys, and I want you guys to write this down, is that the first thing is, is your present circumstances, they do not define your future. And this is, this is massive, guys. Um, present circumstances, they do not define your future. The next thing I want you guys to write down is that I figured out that AI will impact everybody. 
everybody. AI will impact everybody. And it will change everything. So a couple nights ago, I was hearing the, the minister, one of the ministers in, in the government of Singapore talking. And they've, they've just created an entirely, entirely new grant system. Yeah. For people to get that second degree. It's focused on people above the age of 40. Because they realize that those people above 40, they still have 20 years ahead of them. But everything is going to change for, for 40 years. Well, it's going to change for everybody. But at 40, you've already spent 20 years in your career. At 40, you probably have your first degree. But in five years from now, what you've done for the last 20 years is no longer, no longer going to matter. What you, what you went to school for, what you got your degree in, what you got your master's in, it's no longer going to matter. And they're setting up a whole new fund just to retrain, retool people who are above the age of 40, guys. So if you're above the age of 40, like, think about a second career. Most people are, like, taking their foot off the gas. But in Singapore, they recognize that, look, you need to put your foot down on the gas here, guys. So ultimately, guys, um, the last takeaway is, is to have, you know, is AI is the number one way to have an unbreakable career. AI is the number one way to have an unbreakable business. And ultimately, AI is the number one way to have an unbreakable life. Because that's what we're here for, guys, right? To build, to build a life, to build a legacy. At least that's what I believe. So how many of you guys want to have an unbreakable life? Give me, give me a one in the chat if you want to have an unbreakable life. Beautiful. Love it, guys. Love it. So, so ultimately, guys, there are two ways to get to AI today. Um, there are two paths. And what you'll find is that there is an elite group of people, and they are running towards AI right, right now. And they're looking for every edge, every opportunity, every chance to integrate AI across all, all aspects of their operations. These organizations, they are the disruptors. And they will widen the digital divide so big is that, you know, when, when they look back, well you, well, you know the story, right? Or the disrupted, the, the ones that continue to do things in the exact same old way. And before they know it, there's absolutely no catching up. So let me share some crazy numbers with you guys. So 44%, right? Half of us here today, 44% of us here today, right? In the next five years, your core skills are going to be irrelevant. Half of us here today. Over the next five years, there are 83 million jobs that are going to be lost. Now, there are going to be 69 million new jobs. Jobs that don't exist today. 69, new, new, 69 million new jobs are going to be created over the next couple of years. Um, but there's a net loss of about 14 million jobs. And you guys have probably heard this. It's not, it's not AI that's going to take your job. It's the people that use AI will. So, and you'll see why. I'll show you. I'll give you some examples of, of why, guys. So, AI would, on average, make your tasks 40 to 56. Like studies have shown, it'll make your tasks 40 to 56 times faster. So, think about if all AI did was give you a four-hour workday. Like, would it be an interesting thing to explore? Absolutely, right? Um, AI is expected as well for the business people here, the entrepreneurs here, is expected to add between 17 to 26 trillion dollars over the next um, 10 years. What, what does that mean, guys? So uh, to put it, and, and, and Ramon, help me with the math here. So our GDP is 26 million. What's, what's 26 trillion into 26 million? I think it's our GDP for the next hundred years. So it's going to add a lot to the economy. So ask yourself, guys, like, do you want to be the victim or do you want to be the victor of AI ultimately? Because if your competitors are using AI, then, then they ultimately get to decide for you. So I want you guys to decide for yourselves. Now, there's this interesting thing. Study after study, it shows that there's a massive first mover advantage. So everybody knows first movers will take 90% of the market. And everyone else, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, everyone else will be forced to take the balance 10% of the market, right? And, and if you look right now, if you just look at the news, you'll see there's a massive gold rush towards AI. And there's a this, this thing is being created like every single day. So 
If you look at the table here, you'll see big brands, Coke, Kellogg's, you'll see Amazon, and you'll see their local competitors, companies that I promise you, you probably never heard about in your lifetime, right? And, and that's because they were the first movers. Why do you think that is, right? But if you think about these brands, um, what a lot of people don't know is that Coke, Coke was, was created in a, a very small pharmacy in the US. Kellogg's was, was a breakfast cereal accident in a, in a sanitarium, a madhouse of all places. And most of you guys know that Amazon was created in this guy's garage, right? But if you think about who's second to these companies, like there's no close second. How many of you guys here drink Pepsi? <laughs> like not many of you guys here. But if I ask how many people drink Coke, like the majority of you guys, there's no close second place because these guys were the first movers for all of these things. So if we took a step back, guys, like give me, give me a one in the chat if you're already using AI, give me a two. If you're not using AI just yet, I want to know, kind of get a, a little pulse of where you guys are. Okay, so most of you guys, all right. So it looks like kind of like 60, 40, or oh, actually like 50, 50. Oh, actually, most of you guys aren't using AI. All right, no worries. So maybe I'll, I, I'll describe AI in terms of like how, how I see AI, right? So, so think about AI like, like the best employee you could ever find. It's an employee that is always on duty. They're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They don't take breaks. They don't get sick. They don't have bad days. They don't take holidays. So you never need to worry about like, is the work getting done? AI is like an employee that has an exceptional memory. They can store and recall information and, and vast amounts of information way beyond our capabilities so that, so that you never even need to repeat yourself. It's, it's an employee that's a lightning quick problem solver. Um, they, they process and analyze large amounts of data and they can identify issues even before the issue crops up, even before somebody complains and they can even solve it. So you never have setbacks. Um, it's an employee that's always learning. It's again, better over time. So every transaction you do, every piece of data it gets, it gets smarter, it gets better, it gets faster. And this is, the, this is the crazy one, guys. All of them are crazy, but this one is exceptional. So it's an employee that is extremely experienced and adaptable. What do I mean by that? It's an employee that understands HR. It's an employee that understands marketing. An employee that understands sales, that understands operations, that understands finance, that understands IT, that understands consulting, that understands healthcare, that like understands a broad base of things, right? Um, and last but not least is, is, is a, a, an employee that never calls um, the union, right? So, so guys, give me, give me a one in the chat, guys. If, if you want some, an AI employee, give me a two if you're, good, if you're good. You're not too interested. Let me see. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. So, so do you use AI right now? Love to get some examples from you guys. Two, you don't want AI? Uh, okay, no worries, Candice. Uh, uh, but the reality is, guys, is that even if you don't start with AI now, sooner or later, you'll be forced to use AI. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So anybody use AI now? Like, what do you, what do you guys use? Give me some examples. ChatGPT, reports. All right, good. Beautiful. Any other stuff? So if I if I had asked this question, Grammarly, Grammarly's good AI. Okay, cool, good. So if I'd asked this question maybe a year and a half ago, email AI assistants, wonderful, good stuff. Yeah. If I asked this this question a year and a half ago, guys, what, what you would have probably told me is Alexa, Siri, right? And those fall under a class called uh, speech recognition. Um, anybody here uses Netflix? So you, you jump into Netflix and Netflix says, hey, based on this movie you saw, um, we recommend these things. Yeah, absolutely, right? When you, when you get your iPhone up and you hold it against your face and it unlocks your phone, that's facial recognition. Um, those are all types of AI. When your bank calls you and says, did you make that transaction on your credit card? Absolutely. All of that stuff is AI, right? So we've been using AI for a while, but we, this falls into the old class of AI called discriminative AI. What's discriminative AI, right? Well, it's different from what, what you guys mentioned in the chat, which is like ChatGPT. 
And this is really the new class of AI, and it falls into a group called generative AI. And, and this is what people are associating with AI today, but, but ChatGPT is one of many products in the, the generative AI space. So it could be images, video, audio, music, programming, speech, like all sorts of stuff this, this stuff is doing. But ChatGPT is just one example of the entire ecosystem. So how, how is this different, right? Because we've been using AI for a long time. What makes this AI, this new generative AI, so, so different? And it's these three things primarily, right? Is one, it has broad knowledge, broad capabilities. So for the folks that use ChatGPT, for example, or Bard or Claude or any of those, the first time you use it, you realize it's really smart. You could ask it about any topic and it knows as a very broad base of knowledge. So it appeals to everybody. It's also really easy to use, right? Why is that? Anybody, give me a one if you've used Google, give me a two if you do not know how to Google. Give me a one in the chat if you've used Google and you know how to Google, yeah. Give me a two if you don't, absolutely. Right, all ones, absolutely. Everybody on the planet, for the most part, knows how to Google, right? If you know how to Google, then that's how you interact. I'm not saying that using ChatGPT like Google is the best way to do it. I'm saying that if you do use it in the way that we've been using Google, is that you're gonna get okay results. And then last but not least, um, so it's easy to use, it's a low threshold to start using this stuff. And then last but not least is the cost. So for the folks that use ChatGPT, how much do you pay? Let me know in the chat. Free, nothing, absolutely. So there are versions of this stuff that you pay nothing for. So it's free, right? Anybody could use it because it's easy to use and it knows everything on the planet, right? And that's why I believe this is not a fad, that this is here to stay. And, and the scary thing is, like, even if you use ChatGPT now and you think it's, it's okay, do you think it's going to get better or do you think it's going to get worse? Let me know in the chat, guys. You think it's going to get better? Yeah, it's not going to get worse. This is the worst that AI will ever, ever be. So it's only going to get better and better over time. So more and more people are going to be using it. So if you're not even thinking about using it right now, guys, know that like somebody else is out there and they're true and true their work. But I'll show you guys some examples. So I want to share some shortcomings of this AI stuff. Um, so you guys are kind of aware of, of the downside as well. So what you realize when you first use the chat GPTs is that they can be generic. Right, you get, you guys are all experts here. I recognize that this is a very high level room. Most of you guys are entrepreneurs, business owners, um, you know, managers, executives. So, so you guys are experts. You put any time, you study, you have years of experience. And you go to ChatGPT and you ask it to give you something. And it is, it's pretty on point, but it's okay. How many guys experience that? That, that ChatGPT is okay. But the stuff that you know, the stuff that you produce is better. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is generic. The second thing is that it could be biased. Right? Now we could go into a whole conversation into bias and why and how we mitigate, but know that um, because of the way it was trained, like if you, like I'll ask you guys, if I went to chat GPT and I asked it to um, describe this AI image generations too, right? So if I asked one of the AI image creators to give me an image of a CEO, what do you think that CEO would look like? Let me know. What do you think a, what do you think a CEO looks like? Yeah, white male, 100%, right? And that's, and that's what built into these things, right? So there is a, there's a bias built into these systems. I'm not gonna go into how you mitigate, but know that some of the responses that you're gonna get are gonna be biased. Next thing is that there's sometimes a lack of current context and it's how they're developed. So it may not know information after a particular date. So if you ask it a question, always have to validate what it's giving you because it may not be aware of current facts. It's a black box. So sometimes we don't know why it's telling us what it's telling us, um, which is a problem when it comes to trust because you guys probably know that trust is the real, uh, the real currency online and in doing business today. 
Like, would you guys do business with somebody you don't trust, right? So if you can't trust the system, you can't explain why you're doing it, then it becomes an issue. Um, customization, so it kind of comes back into the generic stuff. It, when you use it, it doesn't really know the nuances of your company, of your organization. So customization, but, um, and then the big one for me is hallucin hallucinations. Um, give me a one if you heard of hallucinations. And I'm not talking about the, the magic mushroom hallucinations. All right, cool, good. So what is it? It makes, it makes stuff up, guys, right? It hallucinates. And we'll go into, de into, into more detail um, maybe a next time. But it just, it makes stuff up. Long and short of it, because of all of these challenges, you always, you will always need a human in the middle. What does that mean? It means whatever these things produce, you need a human expert to verify it, right? But what it will do is do the heavy lifting for you guys. So I wanna, how many guys wanna see some examples? Let me know if I, if I could share some examples of how this stuff is actually working. All right, cool, yeah. So Sean, um, let's see here. Okay, cool. So Sean, for example, all right, good. So Sean gave me, uh, let's see. In fact, let me, let me, Sean, because I called you out earlier. Let me get, let me get Lincoln. Lincoln, you here with us still? Oh, it's still, it's actually still working on, Chris, are you here with us today? You still here with us, Chris? All right, cool. So Chris gave us, um, that's, a, so Chris gave us the idea, food pills. Is that right, Chris? Absolutely. Okay. So Chris, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You have a background in, oh, you know what? Chris, you have a background in marketing by any chance? Maybe, maybe not. Nope. Okay, cool. So guys, help Chris out. So you, that's okay, no worries at all. In fact, there's AI for that, so don't worry about it too much. So guys, let's say you want to take a product to market. Uh, what's the first thing that you're going to do? Oh, hey, Sean. Sean here. Okay, cool. Sean is here. So Sean, you want to take a product to market. What's the first thing you go do? You describe it, absolutely. You do research, yes. So you go, you do your market research. You find out if there's a market for your product. Um, you will want to develop an ideal customer persona. So for the product that we have, who is the perfect customer, right? So you research ideal customer persona. So Sean, how long to do that? How long to do market research, develop an ideal customer persona? In fact, you guys tell me, how long to do market research, develop an ideal customer persona? Depends on the product, a week. All right, cool, um, six months. So it depends on, it, absolutely, it depends on the product. So anyway, from a week to six months, Guys, could we take the middle? Could we say three months? Is that okay? So three months, we go out, we do surveys, we have polls, we have focus groups, we do market research, we come back, we develop the ideal customer persona. We, set, we spent three months to develop that. How much money did we spend? Give me a ballpark. Thousands. Give me a number. 100,000. Okay, cool. Sean says 100. So we three months to do market research, $100,000. After we develop our ideal customer persona, the next thing we do is we define a problem. So what's the problem that this product solves right, for this particular customer? Then we define a solution. What's the solution this product um, has for this particular market, the segment using this particular product? That takes some time too, right? How long to do that? How long to do that, guys? Let me know in the chat. Three months. So we are at six months now. Okay, cool. So after we do that now, guys, we have to do a marketing plan. How long to do your marketing plan? Three months. We had nine months. After you do your marketing plan, you might build a customer journey, right? The next couple of months. After you build a customer journey, you might want to build out um, your, all your assets. So you go hire an agency. How much you guys pay, pay agency to write your ad creatives, to do all your images, to do your ad copy, to do emails, to do all of those things, to do all your marketing material. How long is it take you? How much are you gonna pay the guys, pay agency, and how much are you gonna pay them? Hundred thousand dollars. So guys, we spent two hundred thousand dollars at least so far. We are nine months into the process, and we haven't even launched our product yet, right? Give me, give me a one if you guys are getting that. Give me a two if, if that's not making sense to you at all. Cool. So Chris is here, for example, guys, and Chris gave us the idea of. 
um, meal, meal melts, food pills. So we gave some ideas, meal melters, foodie fuel, nourish capsules. So we came up with a brand name. But, but more than that, guys, what we did, we started to build out assets. So Chris, your stuff isn't coming yet, but we did this for Israel. So Israel, here's your plan. Your, you had solar batteries. So we built out an entire marketing plan for you. We did competitive strategies or four piece analysis, a SWOT analysis, competitive landscape, answer of matrix, STP marketing model, BCG matrix. We built out the ideal customer persona, Sarah demographics, female, age 35 to 45, married, she's a marketing manager, her personality traits, she's eco-conscious, her education level, bachelor's degree or higher, her pain points, high electricity bill, concern for the environment, desire for more energy independence, right? What's her dreams, her aspirations, create a more sustainable home, inspire others to adopt green energy solutions, her fears, her doubts, her frustrations, her identity. What is the problem that she's facing? Sarah's facing a high electricity bill and it's concerned about environmental impact. She desires more energy independence, but is hesitant about the initial cost and maintenance of solar batteries. What's the solution you provide? Your customer journey, all of the stages, KPIs for each of these stages. And add example, ready to take the next step towards energy independence and environmental sustainability? Sun power cells, solar batteries are the solution that you've been looking for. We did a concept for the creatives. We did an email sample. We did images, guys. And let's say, guys, this is, this is a rubbish campaign, right? We did this campaign three times for everybody who submitted. So here's, here's Ramon's, one of Ramon's three campaigns. So Ramon had jet plane to get to Port of Spain, Skylink, right? Right, his images will come up here in a second. It's just downloading, right? So here's Skylink, right? Here's, here's Sean stuff. Right, so Sean had carpool karaoke, harmony ride, right? Same thing. So guys, while we were learning about AI, right? AI was working for us. Right? How many guys would love to get AI that would just, while we're doing things that are more important, that are just doing all the heavy lifting? Is it gonna be perfect? No, cause, cause it's, but it does the 80% of the heavy lifting for us guys. Guys, let me know. Give me, give me a, a one in the chat, guys. If you see how we could take a process that could take six months, nine months, hundreds of thousands of dollars, guys, and do it in. This literally took seven minutes. And I did it for Lizelle. I did it for um, Ramon. I did it Israel. I did it for Onika. I did it for Lincoln. I did it for Akia. I did it for Colin. I did it for... Like guys, anybody who submitted early on, right? So you're welcome. You guys could take this and literally use it in your businesses if you wanted to, right? So that guys is, is and I, I put marketing here, but, but remember what I told you guys earlier. It's not about marketing, it's about process. Because regardless of, you guys realize that regardless of the product we had here, it's the same process. Are you guys getting that? Give me a one if you guys are getting that. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it should have gone to you by email, right? Because process will set you free, guys. Absolutely. 100%. All right, cool. So that's process. Now, um, I want to talk quickly about, like, how many of you guys think that customer service in Trinidad could improve a little bit? How many of you guys think so? Right, cool. Absolutely. And I, I did notice that somebody here earlier on was in the insurance space. Uh, I'm not going to call you guys out, but... Um, I think there's room for improvement in, in insurance as well, right? So how many, um, how many guys, been, anybody been in an accident, like a car accident recently? Like how long did it take you to get your claim sorted out? Let me know in the chat. Anybody been in like a car accident recently? And yeah, still in get through. <laughs> Absol yeah, four months, absolutely. And guys, this is, this is, this is normal, right? What if we could change that, right? Because the, the, at the end of the day, guys, like the experience is so bad. Yeah, 2,000 years. Yeah, 18 months, absolutely. The experience is so bad, guys, right? That we just keep rotating between, industri in between insurance companies. Like what if we could change that? So we're working with an insurance company right now who's really trying their best to reimagine what that process could look like. Right? So I want you guys to work with me. Um, you guys said you've been in an accident recently. This is our AI insurance um, adjuster. And again, similar, this was, while this was marketing and a process, 
I want you guys to think about this as customer service and not necessarily insurance. Because there is legitimately room for everybody to improve, improve their customer service. Like, wouldn't you agree? So this applies to every business. Like, would you, wouldn't you want to have AI working for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, online, like helping your customers so that you could take that next holiday? Because that's, that's ultimately what it's about, guys. So let's look at how we did it for, for, for insurance. So, all right, any volunteers, guys? And I, I could only take one, but I, I love you. I love you guys to volunteer. Give me some details about, you know, a previous, a previous incident you've been in. I'm going to use your words verbatim. And I, I only, guys, I could only take one person. Cool. Candice, you've been, you've been in a claim for 20 years, 2,000 years. Uh, le let me know. Let, let's go with Candice. All right, cool, Candice. So I'm going to ask you some questions about the accident. And you guys feel free to chip in. Hey, Candice. So AI is already personalized, personalizing the experience, right? Okay, so we're just going to make up a policy number. All right, cool. Good. That's your policy number, Candice. All right, so now it's going to verify any back end your policy. Make sure everything is cool with that. All right, super. We're all set, Candice. Right. So, Candice, we're going to do an auto claim for you. Is that cool? Is that all right, Candice? And you guys feel free to jump in. All right, cool. So, Candice, I want you to think about the, the accident itself. All right. Um, can you briefly describe the incident leading to the claim? And guys, give me multiple answers and I'll combine them and you'll see. So, Candice, tell me what happened. Um, describe the incident leading up to the claim. So, what happened? And if you want to, Candice, just hold the space bar um, on, your, on your keyboard. All right, cool. Ramon. So, Ramon said... Let me just grab this and just copying it and pasting it. Oh man, where's that? My copy paste isn't working. All right. Let me see if this works here. All right. So Raman said, Guy rammed the car. And I put exactly Raman's words. All right. So he said, Guy rammed the car from behind at the lights. Right? Trini speak, because that's how your customer is going to speak to your AI too. Right? Cool. So it says, Oh, it has, it's, guys, you see any empathy? Hope everybody is okay. Right? So when and where did the incident occur? Let me know. And guys, don't, don't just DM me, guys. You could go ahead and um, share it every. Candice, when and where? All right, McCoy Lights. All right, that's when. when was it where? So, so was it when? And I'm going to use your words verbatim, right? So Sunday. All right, cool. All right, cool. Were there other parties involved? And as a yes, because somebody ran me from behind. So what this first AI is going to do, it's going to act like, um, oops, I repeat the avenue. Sorry about that, Candice. It's going to act like the claims handler, right? Because the first part of the process is the claims handler takes the, process, the claims, they pass it to the adjuster, so they'll do all the documents. The adjuster gets it like a week later. The adjuster reviews it. They call the um, the inspector. The inspector will come out and, and the evaluator do evaluation. Two thousand years gone by, right? So now we could get the evaluation going. So we could upload an image, and I don't have any great images to upload, but literally you could take a picture of it and just drop it in, so that they get all the documents in real time. And this could this AI could even, and I'm just gonna use any picture. Um, this AI could even. Um, it could even understand what's in the images and it could make an assessment as to the value of the damages. So you upload all the pictures, you upload the documents. Um, have you reported this incident to the police or any other authority? Candice, let me know. Did you report this? Yes, absolutely. Candice is a, is a law abiding citizen. Any other, any witnesses to the incident? And if there were, give me their contact details. Any witnesses? And guys, you could chip in too. Any witnesses? All right, no witnesses. All right, cool. I'm just going to put no there, right? All right, what is the estimated cost of the damages? Give me a figure. 5,000. Cool. 45,000 shucks. All right, cool. 
So have you reported this claim or taken any steps towards resolution? Um, have, you have you previously reported it or taken any steps to res resolution? Yes. Okay, cool. Nice. All right, so the first AI just basically, it, it took a claim, right? So you don't have to drive down there, you don't have to go and sit in front of anybody, you don't have to fill out any paper documents, you don't have to do any of those things. And now it's gonna pass you to the AI adjuster. So the AI adjuster says, hi Candice, um, thank you for providing details for your auto claim. From the information you provided, it seems like you were involved in an incident where a person rammed into your car from behind while you were at the McCoy lights on Sunday. You reported this to the police and you've previously, um, and you provided evidence electronically. Your estimated cost of the damage is about $5,000 and you mentioned this isn't your first report of the sort. Is that correct? Guys, do you see how this, how crazy good this is already? Yeah, is this correct? Cool. So who provided the cost estimate for the damages? All right, a mechanic. And I'm not even giving it any context. I'm just saying a mechanic. Uh, oh, Ventura. All right, a Ventura mechanic. Oops. Cool. Good. So thanks for confirming that. It's crucial we figure out the right course of action in slightest claims. Regarding the incident, can you confirm if the any other parties involved in the incident has taken responsibility for the collision or are they disputing? Guys, do you see how crazy good this is? Guys, give me a one if you get in the chat how crazy good this is. Especially for the folks here in insurance. So it's now it's, what it's going to try to do ultimately is right now it's going to ask you questions to try to get to the bottom of the claim. And if it can, electronically, digitally, right now, by the end of the time that you hang up with this AI chatbot, right, you'd have gotten up a claim paid to your to your account if it fell under certain criteria. We could take a process that takes 2,000 years, maybe that's an exaggeration, 2,000 years, and squeeze it down into minutes. Yes, absolutely, less than two minutes. You get an accident. You take out your phone, you talk to a chatbot, you take a picture, and you get money in the bank and you fix your car the next day. Yeah. So I tried AI once to give me a sales pitch uh, for the sale of land. I just described the site location as a sales pitch. Um, but I got a very acceptable, yeah, absolutely, right? It, it understands everything. It understands not only sales, it understands selling land. It understands, insure, it, the AI understands everything out there today. So, so guys, that is that's ultimately the claims process. If you are insurance, I'm going to give it a try. If you want to try and break it, I'll leave it up for a sec. You guys could go ahead um, and, and scan it. Guys, I'm just keeping an eye on time. I know I was supposed to talk for 45 minutes. I just realized it's 58. Um, would it be okay? You guys want me to go ahead or you guys want me to kind of pause here so that we could start wrapping up? You guys let me know in the chat. Give me a one if you go ahead. Are you guys good at that? Give me, a, give me a one if you could go ahead. Give me a two if you, you guys want to stop now. All right, cool. Good. So, um, cool. Great stuff, guys. So, I guess last but not least is ultimately productivity. So, um, I know you guys are super high level, and I want to share something that I haven't shared anywhere else. It's not even released in the public. In fact, only my, a very close group of my clients are, are using this stuff. So, I told you guys how we got into this AI thing and how we developed the AI. Now, if you if you on your own journey, you have to kind of get to where we got to. Because how many guys want to be able to 18x your workforce without, without a dollar in payroll? What we did is we built an AI platform, one AI platform that incorporated over 200 tools. It took all of our processes, all our frameworks, all of our systems that costed us millions of dollars, that costed us years of work, my work, my team's work, and we put it into one system. Would you guys like to see what that system is? It's not available to the public, but I wanna show you guys what that is, if you're interested. Give me, give me a one if you guys wanna see that. All right, cool. So I'll, do, I'll give you guys a, a quick quick peek. All right, so, so this is guys, this is the Incas Hub. And inside here, 
what we've done ultimately is that we've kind of broken up AI into particular segments. So we have AI experts. So you could go in and you could chat with, just like we chatted with an AI insurance claim handler, an AI adjuster, um, AI insurance adjuster. We built a bank of experts that you could go chat with. So whether it was a, you know, a CFO, you wanted financial advice, you wanted health advice, you wanted um, any type of advice around your business, we built experts around it. So think about it like, like the big four at your fingertips, right? A bank of experts. What we did as well is that we also created all of our content assets. So articles, um, press releases, like, I'll, and I'll show you guys. We did image creation, so any images that you wanna create, voiceovers, speech to text, AI workflows. So basically that same workflow that took nine months to do, hundreds of thousands of dollars, we just put that into the system as well. So like literally you could just plug and play in your business. But, but what we did was, was pretty crazy. Um, and I, I, we bought everything out there and there isn't a single system that does it like this. And what we did is we basically, we looked at, I mean, I'm a small business guys. We looked at how small businesses, medium sized businesses operate. And we basically went in there and we built out assets for every single team, every single department. So what is communications, what is corporate governance? And I'll, I'll jump in guys and I'll show you. So let's say, for example, you are in um, communications, you just kind of come in here and you have all of your bank of communication assets. So press releases, internal communications, communication strategies, social media posts, newsletters, Q and A's, like anything in communications that you want to do. We did the same for corporate governance. Right? We did the same for customer experience, for ESG, for finance, for HR, for health and safety, for insurance, for, well, we did verticals as well. So we're doing like banking, insurance, consulting. Um, we did it for IT. We did it for even kids. Cause I, I believe like I, I give my kids AI every single day. How many of you guys have kids here? Anybody have kids here? Because I, it, it, like, I can't sleep at night. I lose sleep thinking about what should my kids learn in school? Yeah, absolutely, guys. Right? And I give my kids so much AI because I believe everyone will use AI someday. Right? So, so we've been incorporated some stuff for kids here. We, do, how many of you guys have a legal department? We put a whole AI legal department in here. Your marketing department, your sales, operations. Like we basically modeled every area of our business and we put it into one hub. And we, we officially launched, we're gonna be the first AI platform in the Caribbean. And um, we officially launched in July in Miami at a, a, a large conference. But, um, but that is how we use AI across every area of business to really streamline operations, streamline every single aspect of everything that we're doing. I'll give you a crazy example, guys. And this is, this is crucial, right? So the way that we think about AI is, every single person in your organization has to use AI. So much so, if we do a quarterly review and a person is not using AI, but they're working 18 hours a day, every single day, like Sunday to Sunday, they are automatically, what? Underperforming. Automatically underperforming. Because if one person could click a button and could do nine months of work, then it's beyond your human capabilities to even to do to do anything as fast as AI. So really, where we're training up our people. How many guys get that? How many guys are getting that? Like the efficiencies are crazy. And if your people aren't using AI, um, that that they're inefficient. So we we adopted that we adopted that uh, mindset a while ago. And every single person in my organization they use AI. So what if on your team, every single person on your team used AI once a day? And that once a day save them nine months of work. By the end of the year, you are years, years ahead of your competitors, right? So, so in, in kind of closing, guys, I wanted to kind of wrap up um, with, with this short clip. Anybody knows what movie this is? Anybody knows what movie this is? Last Samurai. Guys, absolutely. Would it be okay if I played a very short clip from The Last Samurai to kind of drill home a fact? Is that cool? All right, cool.
guys, I, I think I think you already know what the results of of that battle was, right? Um, but some of you guys are, are asking the question, like, like Leslie, was it have to do with anything? Was it have to do with you? And of course, you guys know the answer is is everything, because you never take a knife to a gunfight, and and that's exactly where businesses are today. So if you're using the same strategies that you used before COVID, if you're using the same strategies before we went into lockdown, if you're not using AI in your business, then you're a massive, massive, massive dis disadvantage. So, so how do you guys ultimately stay ahead of the curve? Um, on you. And at the start of the session, I promised you guys, if you guys were good, right, um, that I would give you everything that you needed to be successful with AI. Um, let me know in the chat, guys. How many of you guys enjoyed today's session? Evolve or die. Give me a one if you enjoyed today's session. Yeah. All right, cool. So you guys want me to give you everything you need to be successful with AI? Yes? All right, cool. So so guys, we have this, this um, I believe it's probably the best training in the world when it comes to AI. And um, I want to give it to you guys. So for the first 10 people that register, um, I'm going to give you guys a free seat at our next upcoming workshop. Is that cool? So go ahead, pull out your phones, guys. Give it a scan um, so that you could get you could get a seat. All right, cool. I'll give you guys ten more seconds before I take it off screen. All right, beautiful. All right, cool guys. So I do have I do have one ask if that's okay. Um, are you guys okay? Anybody? Uh, are you guys okay with the link? Did you guys get through? Just want to make sure. I take it down. All right, cool. So I got you guys. All right, beautiful. So you guys are in. I'm seeing your registrations come in. Okay, cool, cool, lovely. Thanks, guys. So I do have one ask. Um, so I'd love to, I'd love to remember this moment, guys. You know, love, love chatting with you. Uh, would it be okay, guys, if we took a quick, a quick group photo? Would that be alright? So I want to ask you guys to turn on your cameras for ten seconds, uh, so we can take a group photo together. Uh, oh, where'd my thing go? Oh, here we go. Um, Sam, could you do the photo? The the pen is. Uh, oh wait, here we go. All right, cool. Let's see, anybody? Oh, waiting on a couple of people. I know there's always one. There we go, that's Alicia. There's always one lady fixing her hair. All right, guys. Let me see, all right. guys. All right, guys, say AI. Oh, wait, we have another person coming on. All right, cool, let's say AI. All right, beautiful, love it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop it in the chat for you guys. Guys, you've been you've been fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and I guess I'll open up for any Q and A that that you guys have. Ramon, if if you guys have time, I, I want to be super respectful for everybody's time. Yeah, thank you very much, Leslie. Any questions for Leslie? Feel free to open your mics and feel Leslie will field a few questions before we wrap up. So the, the floor is open. Yeah, so how much is the AI workshop? So it's normally um, $249, I think it is, but for you guys, it was free. Ah, I didn't get the photo. Crap. You have a question, right. Leslie. How can, we oh, leverage let's see. AI? how can we leverage AI and cybersecurity? Okay, cool. So that's, that's a really, really interesting question. Anybody here ever seen Terminator 2? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so guys, um, in, in January of last year, there was a, and the number might be a little off, something like a 456% increase in something called account takeover attacks online. That is your internet banking getting breached. 450 something percent increase in January of last year. When compared to, 
all of the previous year. One month versus 12 months, it was still 450 something percent higher, right? It's not crazy. What happened one month before? One month before, ChatGPT was released. So everybody could go online because it knows so much about everything. Everybody could go online and become a hacker. So the reality is the only way to fight cybercrime right now is AI. And what you'll end up in is a, like a Terminator 2. I know like all the movies are becoming true now, but it's like a Terminator 2 situation where um, they use a technique called GANs, but basically one AI fighting the next AI is a zero sum game. So one AI always wins and, and the AI that wins gets smarter and it keeps going, it keeps going like that. So how do you use AI for cybersecurity? Well, the answer is you, that's the only way to do cybersecurity now because all the cybersecurity is driven by AI. Did you, did you want the link? Um, I'm not sure if we got to 10, but I'll drop the link, guys. Here you go. Um, Leslie, I operated market research. And mm -hmm. could you give us some insight in terms of how AI is being used in that space right now? I mean, we use oh. ChatGPT and some of the AI um, technology platforms, but what, what, what would you recommend? So, so um, what it does, it, it pulls from a very, very big body of knowledge. So from a research perspective, it, you can use the stuff that it produces to augment your, your research. Now, the biggest challenge for us in the Caribbean right now is is it comes back to the bias. Do you think, let me know in chat, guys, do you think that the body of knowledge on the internet um, represents, a big part of that represents the Caribbean? Probably not, right? No, it doesn't. So when you use these models, when you use this AI, it's not truly the research that you do may not be representative of your particular market. So in the workshop, we teach you how to narrow down Right? How to refine the way that you speak to the AI, how you delegate to the AI. So it's giving you more nuanced responses. That's the first thing. So we show you how to get rid of the bias. We show you how to get better responses from it. But in research and, and pretty much everything, it will augment all of the work that you're doing. But it could take what takes weeks, months. It could do that really, really quickly. Survey design, analysis as well. So not only the data, but the, the tools, the techniques to generate that data, it also helps. And the same is true, really, for everything out there. So, you know, you talk about market, about research in particular, but, you know, HR departments are generating surveys. Marketing teams are generating surveys. So every business could use it for some level of research. Right? But it doesn't replace the professional, the expert. So don't take, don't take that stuff wholesale and use it. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't represent it. Terrific question, Ramon. So, guys, I have um, uh, any any other questions? Uh, we, you guys got so far. And feel free to feel free to unmute if you'd like to. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Keith. Doing well. Can you hear me? I have yes, a gotcha. question higher up. Um, are we making ourselves extinct with all this what you call huge genera generating power, mental capacity? Yeah. So that is that is a, a terrific question, and it's it's one of the biggest risks in terms of in terms of dependency, human dependency. So I'll it depends on how you use it, right, Keith? So what you'll realize is the first time you use this AI, it makes you really, really smart. But if you're not careful, it makes you really, really dumb, really, really fast. Because people become lazy over time and they're just gonna use the AI for every single thing. Mm -hmm. And they stop, they stop sharpening their sword, right? They stop practicing their craft. They stop being the expert. And that's why it's so important that we always remain um, the expert. So let it do the bulk of the work. Let it do the heavy lifting. And then you go in, you have more time to be strategic. You have more time to review the content. You have more time to critique, to critique it, add it, um, so that so that you are ultimately the expert yeah. in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Uh, one last ask, and, and especially for the folks who want to join the workshop, I'd love you guys to click on that link if you don't mind. 
Um, and if you can, let me know what your biggest takeaway out of today's session was. Love to hear you guys. Let's a let AI do the process. Yeah, absolutely. Let it do the, the heavy lifting. Let it do the process, but you do the review. So think about it. And like, like journalists, writers, all of those people are, are heavily impacted, right? Um, and I'm not saying everybody, I don't, I don't claim to have all the answers for all this stuff, right? But, but everything in business is a process. Wouldn't you agree? So if you define the processes and you are, you remain the expert, then you will outpace everybody. Now, the thing is in business, it's going to be the first movers or the late adopters. So let's say you're a first mover, you start to use AI, your team is using AI every day. They are doing months ahead of your competitor. Great. You start, to, you start to chew up market share. You start to chew through their revenue. Fantastic. Life is good. And that's where, that's where we are in business today. Like, I don't compete with regional companies. I come, when I go to a deal, I compete with Microsoft. I compete with Amazon. I compete with Google. And I give them a hard time. Trust me. Right? But on the other side, if you're not using AI today, you're going to wake up and all your customers are going to be gone. And the best, and you're going to have to still use AI, but you're going to have to let people go. You're going to still have to invest in AI. And, and the best you could hope for is try to maintain what you have. It's to bleed slow. So the reality is, guys, wouldn't you agree that we're all going to use AI someday? You know, whether we build some sort of dependency on it, no matter what the situation is, all companies will be forced to use AI. So you get to decide. Do you want to be an early adopter or do you, do you want to be a, a first mover or a late adopter? Up to you guys. Cool. And, and bonus points, guys. So for the guys that leave their feedback um, on that link, I'm going to show you some, some bonus AI ninja tricks as well. Anybody left to, left feedback on the link? Let me know quick so I, so I can show you guys a quick bonus for today. Because you guys are super high level. Work smarter, not harder. Absolutely. All right, Chris, Chris left one. So let me see if I could get it for you guys. So do a quick share here. So this, for example, guys, is, is what you should all be doing in your business. So wouldn't you agree, guys? Like anybody going out to buy something new for the first time, what do they do? They go out. Right, and they buy based on social proof. So what do we do? We ask you guys to leave your biggest takeaway and I'll show you guys what happened. So I'm just gonna search and this is our Google, Google stuff here. And it may not have come in, it takes like a minute or two. But I'm gonna show you guys here, 18X your workforce for free. Right. So, for example, guys, let's see the newest. All right. So, Chris left his stuff. Beautiful. Uh, Monique is no, six days ago. So, Chris left it. Um, it hasn't come up yet, Chris. But what you'll see is within a minute or so, my AI would respond to you. So, so you might have customers out there leaving reviews, leaving feedback, but then somebody, you have to hire somebody on the team to go and respond to those things. And let me just see if I could hit a little refresh here. What you'll see is, let's, let's go look at the newest. Not just yet. So it was about a minute ago. And let me just refresh this page a little bit. Oops, my page is a little wonky. Whoa, what's going on here? All right, cool. All right, so let's go newest reviews. All right. Let's see, it didn't do Chris just yet. All right, let me give it a minute again. But what you'll see, it'll take Chris's response and it'll give us a nuanced response based on what Chris said. Let's see. And the same, same uh, here we go. So here we go. Hi, takes a name. Uh, we're in incredibly grateful for the four-star review um, and for you taking the time to share your experience with us. It's a pleasure having you attend our workshop. We're thrilled to hear that you found it valuable and informative. Your advice and participation enhance the collaboration spirit, Leslie and Team Incas. 
guys, my AI works for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, it's always getting better. It's It doesn't call the union. It is, guys, if you're not using the AI in your business, um, you are you're losing customers right now. Here you go. Here's Chris's, here's Chris's response. All right. Guys, super appreciate you. Um, it does make it come way, way easier. So Ramon, thank you so much. I hand, hand, hand back to you. Thank you so much, Leslie, for your time. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for sharing your skill. And I mean, I don't. I think everybody here could more or less support what I'm saying. If you do, I'll follow Leslie's Leslie's pattern. Give me a one if you you were excited by it, or give me a two if you were blown away. Anyone, one or two. Or we got a three. <laughs> so Leslie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all the participants who joined us today. Um, being part of the webinar series, Mind Your Business. And you can't mind your business without understanding what the future holds. And Leslie certainly painted a picture of the future for us that we must take in, we must take seriously, we must take into consideration if we want our businesses to survive and to thrive. So I'd like to think of something new. Thank you. We have another webinar coming up on Thursday, March 21st, and it's going to be on cybersecurity. So look out for some communication from us on that. But feel free to reach out to Leslie and Inca Services. Reach out if you have any of your questions related to AI. I certainly will be. As a matter of fact, Leslie, I have to come and meet you next week. Um, I'll sit down and talk some more as we as we as we cross that hurdle and we go into this new frontier of AI. As Leslie mentioned, it's a paradigm shift. And we all have to join that bandwagon at some point in time, better sooner than later. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tonight. Do have a good evening. And I hope this series really gives you the sort of impetus and the sort of information you want to improve your businesses and to improve how you see the business world. Um, because we realize we have lots of opportunities. And Tunapuna Chamber, the GTCIC, is here to expose you to those opportunities and to help grow your businesses one, one thought, one, one, one idea at a time. So do have a good evening. And thanks a lot for being with us. Thanks again, Leslie.